from the Computer Museum in the heart of Silicon Valley, extracting the signal from the noise. It's the Cube, covering OpenStack Silicon Valley 2015, brought to you by Mirantis. Now your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Brick. Okay, welcome back everyone. We are here live in Silicon Valley. This is Silicon Angle Media's The Cube, our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host Jeff Frick. Our next guest is friend and Cube alum, Lisa Marie Nampi, HP Helion, OpenStack Solutions Marketing Manager at Hewlett Packard, HP, now HP Enterprise. Congratulations, great to see you. Thank you, great to see you guys. Uh, we just saw you last week in Seattle for OpenStack. Um, you went down in the trenches, also in Vancouver, you guys had a great view of some videos with the beautiful harbor in the background. You're in the trenches. I have been. yes, I was at Trove Day yesterday, I was at the Operator Summit also last week, I think that's four OpenStack shows in two weeks, that's <laughs> probably enough. Um, but that's OpenStack, right? Uh, we've been, uh, you know, on the ground, feet running around, and uh, but we're getting a lot of stuff done. So you're fun. in the trenches. One of the things I love about working with you and seeing you, because we're always out in the events, you're out doing more, you're at the meetups, you guys are doing a lot of work in the trenches, certainly on a coding standpoint, OpenStack, big contributor here in the foundation, but what's going on in the field? What's going on with developers and customers? What are you hearing? What are some of the things that you're feeling from, from the market and the customers, and what are you hearing directly? Well, uh, you, you are correct. I, I do run the local meetup, so I work with a lot of the, the developers and also people that want to get started in OpenStack. Uh, and then on the other side of it, I do work with a lot of customers. And uh, I work with our early adopter forum. Uh, you had Tim LaBelle on here earlier with uh, Scotty Miller from DreamWorks, one of our favorite customers, doing great things with OpenStack. This is, um, I think I said on the, on the panel that I was on in, in Vancouver, I, this is going to be the year of successful OpenStack deployments. Um, that was a counter to uh, what one of my colleagues on the panel said about 2015 being the year of failed OpenStack deployments. I said, why don't we think of this as also the year of successful OpenStack deployments? There's some really big ones out there. You've heard tons of customer testimonials. Jonathan was on stage today with a slide showing lots of uh, successful OpenStack deployments. So people are ready. OpenStack is getting more enterprise ready. Uh, a question that just came up in our panel before, why would you you know, why would you go with a distro? Um, there was a little, uh, you know, Jesse had a little fun last week. Jesse had fun uh, with that last week, with exactly. The, the death of the distro. Um, but he brought it back around, and, and there is a reason you would go with a distro. And Scotty just said, from DreamWorks, just said just now, you know, show of hands, who has actually gone and downloaded OpenStack and, and installed it and implemented it yourself? And I think there might have been one or two operators in the room who raised their hand, but really no one. And he's like, that's why we went with a the distro. There's a reason to do that. Distros are solid, and we're seeing customers adopting it and doing cool things. So what did Jesse mean by his tweet? He's having fun with you guys. Um, there's a movement for distros or against distros. I'm trying to sort this out. What's going on? Is it Are people for distros? Roll your own? What, what's coming out of that? It kind of makes sense There'll of that. There'll always be a roll your own. There'll always be um, you know, the early adopters and, and a, a market for that. Um, but if you, I mean, take Linux, right? 10 years, 12 years down the road, when's the last time anyone's gone to linux.com and, and downloaded that, right? It's all about Linux distros. And and there's there's a reason for that. And I think that's the consensus. I'm not going to ever put words in Jesse's mouth, so you'll have to ask him what he, what he meant. But um, but I think I think we're all finding out that, that people are embracing the distro. I, I don't think it has to be, uh, well, there can only be two at the end of the day. I think there's there's value that different folks are, are adding. Um, I'm sure you had the Marantix folks on here earlier and you probably asked them the same question. I'll, I'll be curious to, to run your feed later and see what they said. Um, but I think there is a need for it. And, and I think we all add things to the party and we know our customers better than anyone else knows our customers and we know how to support our customers. And we work with them very closely and we develop our solutions around what they need. So that's why we do it and that's why it's successful for our customers. It's interesting the distro conversation really highlights the fact that it's moving from kind of a science project conversation into a how do I get to production? And you know, how do I make it real? And it's not just down in the weeds of speeds and feeds, but I need a solution. I think this is an interesting opportunity, a good way to uh, to do my cloud. Let's talk about it and, and, and really talk about deployments and applications and use cases and not really down in the weeds in terms of the, uh, no, the nuts and, and bolts and all the bits and pieces and parts and exactly. putting them all together. How many times have you heard the words container? 
today, right? So uh, people are ready to move on. They're ready to do cool things with their infrastructure. They're ready to go up the stack, and that PaaS layer is, is coming up more and more in this conference, at the summits. I've heard lots of uh, references to containers today and to, and to other technology that's out there. There was a session on Kubernetes earlier. We all have our cute little stuffed whale that we took from, from DockerCon and it sits on our desks that we you know play with all day long and, and it inspires us. Um, and I've seen it on a lot of slides today too. So I think people are ready to, to, to talk to the application developers to, to do the fun things with the cloud. What are you going to build? What are you going to do with your cloud? How is it going to help you? What fun apps are you going to build? I think that's definitely where the conversation has gone. So on HP's new enterprise, share some color for the folks watching. Obviously, we heard about the big split, printers, enterprise. We were in Boston uh, this past month for the HP Big Data event, and there was a really good vibe there. You felt, people felt, I don't want to say unshackled, I'll just say unshackled, if you will. All the, the, the noise in the market, the press reports, there's some great stuff going on with customers. We've, we've talked to many of them, DreamWorks being one. What's going on, and the cloud is one of those areas that's got momentum, it's emerging. Um, what's your take on that? It's super exciting. I, that change, to me, is always exciting. It brings a new level of energy into a corporation. I think our customers are excited. You know, we'd like to think that you know, we can laser focus and support our customers better. Um, you know, we'll, we'll, focus our resources. I think it's it's fun. Uh, there's a lot of excitement around it. New branding comes in, brings a whole That's bunch right. of new the energy. Green. The green is it's, coming. It's green, yeah. <laughs> there's great stuff coming out of HP Labs. I'm sure you've probably talked to Martin Fink or maybe saw some of the stuff we had there. We have there. to get Martin Fink on the cube. You do, you really So what's going to. on about Martin Fink? <laughs> well, you know. He's got to come on the cube, sit in the hot seat. <laughs> absolutely, and I, just that stuff he was showcasing at Discover, really super yeah. exciting. So, um, it would just come to Palo Alto and come <laughs> to the lab and, and come and take a look yes. at it. Bring your Martin, cameras, coming you probably. To the lab. Absolutely, <laughs> you got it. You got to check it out. So it's fun. It's a fun time. It's exciting. I, I love the energy. I think our customers can feel that. And Discover in London is going to be off the top. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. Bring the cube there. But getting back to OpenStack and the cloud, because you guys are a big contributor on the governance side as well. Helped set up the whole foundation. Been there from the beginning. What's going on now? We heard from the keynotes today. There's some stability and winners, and the you know, winners, the niche players, virtualization is a winning trend, compute is solid, and then everything else is moving fast. There's some projects that are big, some are not big, so what are you hearing is emerging into the winning category? Obviously, the compute is solid. What's winning in OpenStack? What's trending in terms of projects and, and typical deployments? Well, I think we heard uh, some customers say it's um, you know, the integrating, uh, obviously scale is going to be winning. Scale and security are, are things that are huge, huge, huge focus, and you see a lot of the projects focusing on those, and I think we're making a lot of progress there. Um, you know, high availability is, is huge for our customers. Uh, obviously integrating the PaaS layers and, and you know, containers, that is, you know, if we're allowed to say that again for the fifth time in this interview, <laughs> Absolutely we trending. Need some containers for the table. I know. <laughs> I should have brought my whale. Um, so I, I think those are trends. But I think what and Monty will probably say the exact same thing to you in, in a few minutes when he comes on here. You know, we don't want to be talking about OpenStack anymore. We want to be talking about these other exciting things and have OpenStack just be the thing, right? And just not be the forefront of the conversation, but just be the everywhere, like Linux and like the other technologies that have come before it and just been so prevalent and so successful. That's where we would love to be next year. You know, can we can we stop talking about OpenStack? So I, I think we've done a good job to lay the groundwork and the foundation in order to make that happen. Um, and I think everything else that'll be built on top of OpenStack, it'll just be that sort of, you know, fabulous technology underneath that we're not talking about anymore. <laughs> so talk about your book. Um, share us your book, and we, you got a new edition. Show the, hold it up. Second edition. Flat camera. Open stack, breaking the barrier entries. What did you find in the book? Obviously, it's a primer for people getting in the business. What's the key thesis that you explored in this revision? What's going on? What are the barriers that people are breaking through? And give us the update. The the number one reason I wrote the book again is because. Uh, I think we had something like 13 and a half thousand downloads of the last version, and maybe 12,000 of those people came up to me and said, you're going to do it again, right? Because it turns out there's still nothing really out there like this. 
that entry level, you know, I wrote it for business customers, I wrote it for enterprise customers, so that they can understand OpenStack. You know, it does, it's not an install guide, or it's not supposed to be, people have used it for that, but it's not in the weeds, there's plenty of things around there about that. It's talking to the enterprise about, you know, why OpenStack? Why would you want to even go there? And why did we invest so much in OpenStack? So that's all in there. Uh, we updated a little bit for Kilo, um, and uh, you know, I, I have a lot of PTLs at my disposal that I get to pick their brains on things. So you know, we kind of talk briefly about a few of the, the various projects, and then also HP Helion OpenStack specifically, and what problems that can solve, and what value that adds to OpenStack. And it turns out that's important for customers. And I think people do get so in the weeds that they just jump down past that level when they start writing books and technical white papers. It's technical enough. Uh, but it's it's really to be on that layer to have enterprises feel comfortable that this technology is solid. It's real. It's you know got a lot of support. It's got a ton of momentum, and it's a really good time to get on board. Right, right. But what what has been the biggest barrier when people are, are making this decision um, in your in your discovery at the enterprise level? What what's still holding them back? It seems like there would be a lot of ways that they could experiment yeah. with it, that they could do the trial. It's funny your your comment about this could be the year that. Somebody said, you know, of OpenStack failures, is, is OpenStack failures really success hidden as failures and just at the early stages? That, was, that means that people are trying things. And hopefully learning, and I think the biggest barrier is probably um, maybe the lack of OpenStack knowledge and expertise within the companies. So you do have professional services companies out there, you have companies that have made a living on going and helping implement OpenStack and you know, we as well, but I think that's a really tough one. And there, there's still a finite number of people that really have this expertise and we play musical chairs a lot and go from company to company, but we really need to get those numbers up so that we can get those OpenStack implementations to be very successful. Right. Um, you know, we can solve the problems of, of scalability and security, and we can build great software that'll be stable, but we really need that OpenStack expertise in there to, to make sure that this continues to be, uh, you know, successful inside the corporations once it gets in there. That's kind of why I think people are... Well, it's interesting that your PS comment is, you know, has, you know, you always look at like Accenture and those companies, you know, there's, there's some young, smart partner who sees an opportunity to build their own brand, build a new business inside those companies around a new technology. Have we seen that really within Accenture or some of the, the large independents? I know you guys have your own services, ARM, clearly IBM, a lot of people have their own services, but looking at say the Accentures of the world and, and have we seen, you yeah. know, we don't see them sponsored here, but maybe they just haven't really raised their head yet. I do feel like there's been a big push to get more OpenStack expertise in those types of corporations because that's what is going into their customers' sites. Right, so right. So they need to be able to, to support that and to build that because they, they, you can't just you know make another phone call and bring in another team of right, people. Right, right, and they can sniff it out, right? And they, they know, wow, this is something yeah. I'm going to bet my career on. You know, I'm not doing SAP implementations. That's already been yeah. done. You know, I've, I've done, I'm not doing... Uh, Salesforce implementations, those those have already done. Wow, here's something new and different that I can build my career, build a nice business, yeah. and make partner on. I mean, yeah. very I think Bryce selfishly. Waterhouse has, you know, they have in-house expertise around there. They, we've been partnering with them uh, around our cloud solutions for, for quite some time. Of course, our services organizations. So it doesn't have to be just the specific OpenStack companies out there that have it, and more people are learning it. If you look at the threads, that's a, you see those questions all the time. You know, where can I get more information? How can I learn? People are people are trying to build out that, but it's 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 taking a little bit longer than I'd like to see. Yeah. So talk about the um, what's going on from a marketing standpoint. Bobby Patrickson is still the, is still in there driving things. Um, organization, give us an update on what you guys are doing in marketing. How the cloud groups organize? Can you just share some color into where that's all going? We've got a big a hybrid um, campaign going on right now that you may have seen, and uh, so big marketing push around around hybrid cloud. Um, Bobby's great. He he totally gets the you know the open source the ground up side of things as well as top down. Uh, so you know I still have a lot of support for the meetups and for um, you know going out there and supporting the, the new technologies and being at DockerCon and and different places. So we can kind of always be on the cutting edge. Um, but you know our customers are still big enterprise customers, and so we have some exciting. We still do the Wall Street Journal ads and the the big the big ads, and Bobby spends a lot of time in New York. Um, so. We have, we have a lot of big marketing campaigns going on. Um, hybrid data is, is the big one right now. And uh, we'll have a lot of cool stuff at Discover that we'll unveil that uh, we'll, 
look forward to sharing with okay, you. Okay, final question, we've got a break. What's the big walk away for the past year? Looking back now, what, what do you walk away with the past year in OpenStack? What's, what's the big epiphany? What revelations can you share to the audience? I think this community, uh, you know, I'm so community oriented and um, I've been running this, this user community here in the Bay Area for a couple years now and it's the way it's grown and the energy around it and the excitement and you know, the, the collaboration, the corroboration, the diversity, you just saw me on the diversity panel last yeah. week, um, which was a lot of fun Beautiful. and there's a really big push in OpenStack to diversify. And it's working too, it seems to be working. Yeah, and you know, I, I'm here, right? Okay. And uh, so that that's a good thing and I've, I've really, loved helping this community grow and um, and just globally and the excitement that we're, we're finding worldwide has been fantastic and that's just that's just proof point for this going to be a success going forward. All right, Lisa Marie, thanks for joining on theCUBE and good luck with the, book, the next book thanks. sale, book tour, you're on the book tour now with theCUBE. <laughs> yes. Great, great to see you. And I'm going to sign this for you guys as soon as, right. uh, as, soon as we're done Marie here. Thanks here for having the me. Lisa Marie here inside theCUBE from HP Cloud, Helium Cloud, here at OpenStack Live in Silicon Valley where all the action, again, the community's robust, it's growing, it's energetic, and it's just going to go a whole nother level. Super exciting. We're bringing you live coverage from theCUBE here in Silicon Valley. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>